Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, I'm Jennifer from Auburn Yoga and Pilates. Tonight we're going to do some yoga focused on hip flexors. So I hope that you will join us now or watch later on replay. Okay, let's get started. So starting off in what feels like a comfortable seated position, you want to be able to lengthen your spine. So if sitting on a folded blanket or a pillow makes that a little easier, then please do that. So a nice long spine lifting up through the top of the head, inhaling through the nose, all the air you can fit, and then slowly exhaling out your mouth. And then again, inhaling through your nose, all the air you can fit, and exhaling slowly out your mouth. And one more time, inhaling through your nose, all the air you can fit. Exhaling slowly out your mouth. Now see if you can keep that breath, but change it to a purely nostril breath. So in through the nose and out through the nose, but trying to keep that same fluidity of breath, trying to keep that same depth of breath. So as you inhale, your front body moves away from your back body. As you feel that torso expand. And then as you exhale, your front body moves closer to your back body again. As that air temporarily empties out. inhales and exhales going. Trying to block out any noises or distractions that may be going on around you. Trying to bring your attention inward. Trying to get it so that nothing is disruptive to you. It's like you are a rock sitting in the middle of the stream and as the Water moves around you, along with any small pebbles or sand. You remain there, grounded and still, really settled and comfortable in the spot that you're in. And then just taking a moment to reflect on anything that may have left you a little unsettled today, anything that didn't go as planned. And just letting that travel down the stream, letting it go. Instead, trying to draw your attention to any goals that you may have for today, the next few days, maybe even during the next week. And trying to visualize what the completion of that goal looks like. 
see or feel whatever it is complete. Focus on how satisfied you will feel at that moment. And try to just sit in that picture just for about two minutes here. Really making sure that you both set an intention and then take the time to not only visualize it, but incorporate other senses. So that you don't only see it, you actually feel it. And then deepening your breath, bringing yourself back into the room, switching the cross of your legs and circling your spine. Working on waking up those energy centers in your back. You can make your circles large or small. Switch direction. Trying to ensure that you are visiting all the different parts of the circle front, side, back. And then holding it in the center and transitioning into an all fours position. So lining up those wrist creases so that they're parallel to the short end of the mat. Allow your pelvis to spill forward and allow your heart center to reach forward. And then switch the direction and move between cat and cow with your breath. So these are poses that sometimes it's easy to go through mindlessly. But I'm going to challenge you to be mindful of them tonight. Try to exaggerate them in order to get the most benefits. Getting the lengthening in the front body and the expansion in the back body.
and then holding a neutral spine. From here, you may want to use blocks or anything that can act as a block as you step your right foot forward. Or you may just step your right foot forward. Curl the back toe under, lift the back knee, step the back foot forward to come into a forward fold. So you can rest your hands on the floor or you can rest your hands on blocks. Inhale, heart forward, head forward, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold forward, inhale, sweep those arms up and reach really long through those fingertips. Exhaling those arms down by your side. So grounding down through your feet, lifting up through the top of your head. Inhale, sweep those arms up and grabbing hold of your right wrist, come over into a lateral stretch. Let that right shoulder fall back slightly. Gaze up if you can. Try and find a little bit of an opening in that side body. Come back to center. Bring those arms parallel to each other again and opposite side. Grab hold of that left wrist. Come over. Allow that left shoulder to fall back slightly. If you can, adjust your gaze. Up. back up to center, exhale, drop those arms down. Inhale, sweep those arms up, exhale, sweep those arms down. Inhale, heart forward, head forward. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweep those arms up. Exhale, those arms down by your side. Going through a few of those, just little half of a sun salutation here. So folding forward, lengthening that spine, folding forward again on the exhale, inhale, floating yourself up, exhale, rooting down through your feet, and just move with your own breath. One more time. This time, holding yourself in a mountain pose. So from here, you can interlace your hands behind your back. Or if you find it more comfortable with a little bit more space, you can hold on to some sort of belt or strap, a towel will work too. Your thumbs face out. Your pinkies are on the inside so that your shoulders are in external rotation. Engage your upper back and let your knuckles point down and travel back as you open up your front body. Relax 
relax those arms down by your side, whether you're holding the belt or whether you have them interlaced. If you had your hands interlaced, then I'm going to challenge you to try the different clasps. So different thumb, different forefinger on top. Engage that upper back, reach those knuckles down and back, whether you're using a strap or not using a strap. And then stepping those feet out just slightly wider than your hips. If you are on a yoga mat, you can span approximately the shorter side of the mat, making sure your feet stay on the mat. Optional from here, come in to a forward fold with chest expansion. So letting those hands fall away from the hips. Bring those hands to the back of those hips and very slowly lift yourself back up into a standing position. And bringing those feet together and then coming up toward the short end of the mat. Inhaling, sweeping those arms up. Exhale, sweeping those arms down. Inhaling, heart forward, head forward. Exhaling, fold forward. Now from here, step back into a plank position. If you want to modify, simply drop those knees, make your lever shorter. Either way, engaging your abdominals, pulling them up towards your spine. Now slowly lowering down to the floor. And now taking those arms so that your elbows end up just under your shoulders, coming into sphinx pose. So root down through those knuckles, through those fingertips. Press the shoulder blades and the heart center forward. Your big toes point straight back. Now engage the muscles in the right leg. Try to spin your right inner thigh to the ceiling. Lift your right leg up from your hip. And dropping that down, trying the same thing on the other side. Lifting that left leg. dropping that leg down and taking those hands so that they are by your side ribs and coming up into a small cobra pose. Exhale, coming down and then activating both legs, thinking about engaging both inner thighs and come into upward dog. You want your hands and your feet on the floor, your shoulders right over your wrists, and then come back, press back, down dog.
and then lifting your right leg. I'm going to lift my left leg only because of the direction that I'm facing it. So coming into three-legged dog, still reaching those arms out in front of you. Now bring your heel closer to your gluteal, lift that knee, turn that hip out. Opening that hip flexor. Lengthen that leg again and step it forward. Drop that back knee. Front knee over front ankle. Walking your hands up your leg. Bringing your shoulders back. Reaching those arms. Coming into a knee down crescent pose. Letting your hips fall forward and down. Trying to find an opening through the front of the back leg. Now sweep those hands down. Now you can sweep them down to the floor or you can sweep them down to blocks. You want to wiggle that front foot forward, pull the toes back toward the knees, fold over that leg, stretch the hamstring. So, a little bit more intensity in the stretch if the hands are on the floor. A little less intensity if you pick those blocks up a bit. And 
time dropping those legs down, taking those hands by your side ribs. And coming up into some form of cobra, small cobra. Coming down, activating those legs, coming into up dog. Down dog. Now, lifting that left leg. Three-legged dog. Still reaching those arms out in front. Head should still fall between the arms. Heel to your gluteal. Lift that leg, try to open up that hip, front of the hip. Lengthen that leg, now step it through. Drop that back knee down. Walk the hands up the leg, and if you feel comfortable, reaching those arms up. Again, letting those hips sink forward and down. And then taking both hands to the inside of your front leg, sweep that front leg back, come into child's pose to rest. So you can prop your forehead up on a block, on fists, you can stretch your arms out in front, whatever you prefer. Letting your hips fall back in the direction of your heels. And then coming up. Now, if you have any existing knee issues, or simply sensitive knees, you're going to want to duplicate that knee down lunge that we did moments ago in the center of the floor. Those of you who don't have any existing knee issues, if you're not on a fairly soft surface, you're going to want to put down a folded towel or a blanket. Chances are almost regardless of what surface you're on, unless you've got like a real plush carpet, you're going to want to put this down. And then you're going to kneel so that 
your right shoulder, and I'm doing the opposite. So when I end up facing the camera, I'm mirroring you. That your right shoulder ends up adjacent to your wall. So you do need a little bit of wall space. Now you want to bring your knee, your right knee, as close to the intersection of the wall and the floor as you can. Now from here, you may want blocks. You're going to step your outside leg forward. In your case, this is going to be your left leg. And you stepped it down and stepped it out, rather, into a typical lunge position where your front knee is basically aligned over your front ankle. And then you're going to pivot, not right on your kneecap, but just over your kneecap, so that your foot ends up resting on the wall. The top of your foot is adjacent to the wall. Your toes are all pointing upward. So you're in deep knee flexion. Now, textbook, you would have your knee, again, right to the intersection of the floor and the wall. That's hard. So it may be that you moved your knee slightly away from the wall, and that's okay. Now, if you have tight quadriceps and tight hip flexors, you'll find that you're still somewhat forward leaning, but you want to get as upright as you can. Many people can not only come up to where I am, but they can start to draw their shoulders back to the wall to really get a lengthening through the front of the back leg. So do what you can. You obviously don't want to do anything that's going to cause you discomfort. You may feel um, a little bit of intensity in the stretch, but it should never be painful. If it is, you definitely want to modify. So speaking of modifying, remember that you could be doing this without a wall, just in a typical knee down lunge, trying to lengthen that hip flexor. So we'll hold here a few more breaths. And then, some people from here have a really smooth way of coming out. I just step that leg in and then move that opposite leg away from the floor. And then, prep yourself for the other side. So, again, this time, you'll take that left shoulder in a kneeling position. to the wall. And getting your knee as close as you can to the intersection of the floor and the wall. And then from here, stepping out that right leg, you want to make sure your front knee aligns over that ankle. And then again, coming just over the kneecap that back foot is pressing against the wall. The top of the foot is pressing against the wall. And all the toes are pointing upward on that back foot. If you need to modify a little, 
Move your knee just slightly away from the wall. If you need to modify a lot, then come away from the wall altogether. If you want to make it more challenging, make sure that that knee is right at the intersection of the floor and the wall. So you may find dramatic differences in both sides. So um, on the first side, I came up, you know, just literally momentarily. I found that I got enough intensity in the stretch, just using my blocks to rest on. This side is a little different, which is normal. We are not balanced people. So find that place that works for you, remembering that you're trying to bring those shoulders back toward the wall. Some of you may be able to get there. If that's the case, that heel falls just outside that hips, the toes are still upward facing. And again, we'll hold here for several breaths. Strong stretch. forward and gently bringing that foot away from the wall coming back and now coming into a seated position but we're going to go onto our backs into a supported bridge pose so if you have a block or blocks Please use them. You want to walk those feet in so that they're relatively close to your hips. Your feet are parallel to each other. You can keep the block low, medium, or high, entirely up to you. And you want to rest the back of your hips on that block. Now, although inevitably the height of the block is up to you, I encourage you to not make this your most extravagant bridge ever. The purpose of this bridge here today is really just to release the hip flexors. You're not going to get the active stretch that you just had in that King Arthur pose, which is that knee down lunge with one foot at the wall. But you should feel like your hip flexors can completely relax here. They're definitely not gripping. Now another reason for not making today your most extravagant bridge ever is that if you're at what feels like a low or a medium height for you, you may feel comfortable extending those legs a bit more. You don't have to fully extend them. And if it's too much of a back bend, 
then omit it. Stay where you are. This is just an option. And then bending those legs and lifting those hips enough to slide the block out. And then taking those feet to the edge of your mat and allow those legs to just windshield wiper side to side. Release your back, release your hips. And then hold those legs to the center and bring yourself into a place for final relaxation. So you want to allow your feet to be slightly wider than your hips. Again, if you're on a standard yoga mat, approximately to the edge of that yoga mat will work. You may want to place a prop somewhere under your legs. You may want to place a folded blanket over your hips or your thighs. Now, unlike at the very beginning, where we tried to create a certain type of breath, we're not here. You want to simply observe the way that you are breathing. Hopefully noticing how a deep, fluid breath can really calm the body. And then bending your legs and planting your feet. Bringing movement back into the rest of your body. As you feel ready, roll to your side. Eventually coming into a seated position. Inhale. 
Inhale, sweeping those arms up. Exhaling, bringing those hands to heart center. The light with the knee salutes, the light with the knee. Namaste. Uh, for those of you who are watching this live, I hope you've had a great weekend. Um, for everyone else, I hope you're having a great day. Um, again, please comment, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, and please share this with anyone who you feel may appreciate it. We have all different kinds of classes. Thank you. Bye.